Hello and welcome to a session of lines and angles. What is a line? Let's understand a point first. There is a point. How many lines can pass through a point? There are infinite number of lines which can pass through a given point. But if say there are two points separate at a distance to each other, how many lines can pass through them? There is only one line. Why? Because two points are separate to each other. Only one line can pass through one of them and the second one simultaneously. Let's have a look at what is parallel lines. Two lines, absolutely same direction, same way to each other are parallel lines as shown in the graph. Now what other things are there? Let's understand by use of a simple diagram. Now here you see three lines. A, B is one line, C, D is another line and L, M is the third line. There are eight angles marked in the diagram. What is an angle? When two lines intersect at a given point, they tend to make angles. Now point P is the point where LM and AB are intersecting. So they are making four angles. Why? Because both the lines are continuous lines. They are not ending at that point. So there are four angles. Angle 1, 2, 3 and 4. Now to me it looks like LM is perpendicular to AB. Now what is perpendicular? When the angle between LM and AB is 90 degrees. So all the four angles typically would be 90 degrees. Now let's look at more things. What is an adjacent angle? Let's take it angle 1 and 2. Now any angle which is next to each other. So 1 and 2 are next to each other. 1 and 4 are next to each other. 1 and 3 are not. 2 and 3 are. Similarly 5 and 6. 7 and 8. 6 and 7. 5 and 8. 5 and 7 are not. So any two angles which are adjacent to each other are adjacent angles. Linear pair. Now on a given line, if the two angles are being made, so 1 and 2 are an angle which are made on line LM by the intersection of AB are linear pair of angles. Vertically opposite angles. 1 and 3. They are opposite to each other. So they are vertically opposite angles. Let's have a look at what are the different types of angles. Now if an angle is said to be acute, acute as in less than 90 degree. Here, we can confidently say that angle 5 and angle 7 are acute angles. What is an obtuse angle? When an angle is more than 90 degree but less than 180 degree. So here 6 and 8, these are the two angles which are obtuse angles. Straight angle. Now straight angle is nothing but if it's a straight line or the angle is 180 degree. So here if you combine angle 5 and 8, it will make 180 degree. So if the line LM is not intersecting, then CD becomes a straight angle. What is a right angle? As we said perpendicular which means 90 degree. So a right angle is nothing but if the angle is 90 degree which I think angle 1, 2, 3 and 4 all of them are. Reflex angle. Now this is an angle which is typically more than 180 degree but less than 360 degree. So this is normally the case when two lines originating from the same point now within them they would typically make an acute angle or an obtuse angle. But the angle which is the major angle outside would be a reflex angle. What is the complement angle? Now if out of 90 degree I have to make two angles or say if an angle is given which is less than 90 degree then the difference between 90 degree and the measure of this angle is called complement of an angle. Similarly if we have to subtract the angle from 180 degree it is called the supplement of an angle. The sum of linear pairs of angle is typically 180 degrees. Whereas, sum of all the angles around a point are 360 degrees. Now, vertically opposite angles as we saw, angle 5 and 7, angle 8 and 6, angle 1 and 3, angle 2 and 4, these are all equal, which means that 5 equals 7, 8 equals 6, 2 equals 4 and 1 equals 3. Now, let us look at other things. There is something called a parallel lines. Now, when a parallel line is being intersected by a transversal. Now what is a transversal? A line that intersects two parallel lines. So parallel lines which when intersected by a transversal in the same case angle 1 and angle 5 will become equal. Angle 2 and angle 6 will become equal. Angle 7 and angle 3 will become equal. And angle 4 and angle 8 will become equal. Now these pairs as we said 1 and 5 are corresponding angles. 2 and 6 are corresponding angles. Whereas if we form a Z, now if we form, try to form a Z here, it will be what? Angle 3 and angle 5. Now angle 3 and angle 5 will be called 
alternate angles or alternate interior angles. Now, what are interior angles? Anything which is lying between the two parallel lines are interior angles. So, here 2, 3, 5, 8, these are all interior angles. Interior angles like 2 and 5, which are on the same side of the transversal, these will add up to 180 degrees. Similarly, for 3 and 8, if you look closely, 2 and 5 form a C. Now, this, this kind of C, either in this direction or in the reverse, which is 3 and 8, these are typically adding up to 180 degrees. This is possible when a transversal, again, is intersecting two parallel lines. If the lines are not parallel, this all does not hold true. Let us look at a practical example. A question, in the given figure, PQ and RS are two lines intersecting at O. Now, if POR is equal to 50 degrees, find the other three angles. Now, going by the logic, now RS is a straight line. So, anything which is on a straight line, total will add up to 180 degrees. So, if POR is 50 degrees, POS will become what? 130 degrees? Let us look at another example. In the given figure, transversal P intersects two lines M and N. Angle 4 is 110 degrees and angle 7 is 65 degrees. Now, question is, is M parallel to N? Let us have a better look. Now, angle 6 and angle 7, which are linear angles, should add up to 180 degrees. Hence, angle 6 becomes what? 115 degrees. Going by the alternate interior angles concept, the Z that we made, angle 4 and angle 6 should be equal if they are parallel. Angle 4 is what? 110. This is 115. Hence, they are not parallel. So, let us conclude that M is not parallel to N. Let us have a look at another example. In the figure, AB is parallel to CD. If angle A is 128 degrees, angle F is 136 degrees, and angle DCE marked in the figure is X degrees, find X. Now, looking at the figure AB, CD, we need something at F. So, let us draw a parallel line to AB and CD passing through F. Once this is done, we realize that there is an angle called AFG. Now, angle A and angle AFG form the C, which is the interior angles. So, that should add up to 180 degrees. Hence, angle AFG becomes what? 52 degrees. Let us look at the other side of the parallel line, angle CFG. Now, the upper side is what? 52 degrees and the entire angle F is 136 degrees. So, CFG becomes 84 degrees. Now, CFG is corresponding angle to X. So, X will also be the same. Hence, we get X at 84 degrees. Let us look at another question. In the given figure, AP is perpendicular to AB. AP is parallel to EF as well as BQ and AF is parallel to ED. Find angle DEB. In order to solve this, we will have to extend FE. So, let FE be extended to T which is perpendicular to AB. Now, angle AFE is what? In the right angle triangle, it will add up to 90 degree with the other A angle which is 22. So, AFE becomes 68 degrees. Hence, angle EDB will also be 68 degrees. But the angle DBE which is internal side will add up with 12 to make 90 degrees. So, that becomes 78 degrees. So, 68 degrees here and 78 degrees there. So, the third angle of the triangle DEB will, will be what? 34 degrees. Now, this is how the fundamental concepts of lines and angles will be further used in triangles, quadrilaterals and other parts of geometry.